Hey guys, we're back with a quick tutorial on something called handmade arc circle charts. So we are going to look today at some arc circle charts. And these are these sort of cool, um, almost like curled pie charts, um, or sort of a combo of a pie graph and a bar chart. Uh, and they're just funky because they can do a few things, like they can sort of be concentric and use color to show value. Then they also do this sort of nice curling effect where they come around and the pieces are uneven. And um, it's just a cool way to represent data. I don't know if it has any superior quality over anything else um, that's more traditional, but it looks nice. So I'm going to show you today um, by showing you guys how we use our brush technique Right? I like to create charts into brushes, and then that gives me the ability to stretch them proportionally. Proportion is key to um, understanding that if you make a chart with set values by using real measurements and then um, setting them up this simple way, you can make a brush like I've done here. We're going to go through that process today um, and then apply it to anything. So we showed you in a previous tutorial how to do that with timelines. Here we're going to do it with this circular bar chart, okay? Here's a little peek at what we're going to be making today, okay? Um, so this is a uh, concentric ringed little structure I built, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I applied my brushes, um, giving it real data, right? And you can see that because it's a nice, beautiful circle, it applies the charts proportionately, accurately, and you get the extra added visual flair from um, this kind of graphic. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to go in two parts here. We're going to talk about making um, brushes. So this was one that I had previously put together. We're going to use these five values today, but I'll make a brand new one here. So what I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle, okay? And then off screen, sorry, off screen at the top uh, in the ribbon, there's a, a section that will measure the width and height of each of these things. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm dealing with percentages, I'm going to say 100 px for the width, and that's going to make this shape 100 pixels wide. Okay, it's a nice number to work with. Now, this is going to be the extent of the bar chart, like you see below, but I'm going to um, now add the real value. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to do a special paste. It's under Edit, and it says Paste in Front, Command F. Okay, so you're going to paste paste an identical gray shape right on top of this previous gray shape. i right? show you. There it is, right? But instead, I'm going to grab this right-hand side and shorten it, okay, just to show you can do it by hand, or you can set the width to be 75. Oop, not 75 inches, 75 px, okay? And now, because it did it from the center, we can use the align tool by selecting both shapes and popping open the align tool. Let's get that into the mix here. Where are you, align tool? Okay, I can just hit now align objects horizontal left, so these two will snap right into place. And I'm going to take this front shape and I'm going to use one of my pre made colors. Okay. So there, now I have 75% in value. So what's amazing is I can take this because of the principle of proportion, right? As long as I keep these two shapes proportionate to one another the way they are here, I can scale them any way I want. Even stretching them this way, which would seem goofy, but by keeping the proportion from here to here, it's enough, right? I can represent that this is in fact 75% of 100%, and that is going to be accurate. So that is how you make these standalone bar charts, and because they're straight up horizontal bar charts, um, and we used real numbers to plug it in, we've now created accurate graphics. By converting these into brushes, like we do uh, have here, um, we can then apply them to any path, and they'll remain proportionate, but they'll look interesting because we have control over the path. Okay, so we're going to make some of these into brushes. I've already created this brush set, okay? I can just uh, grab these guys and delete them. Okay, 
So here's how this is going to go down. I've already made this blue one, just so you can see how in the list it's going to stack. I'm going to make the dark blue one. All right, so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take my black arrow and draw a box around the blue and the gray. Okay, you can see they're both selected. And that's going to now capture that shape and make it into a brush. So in the brushes palette, there's this little new brush button, and I'm going to push it. And it's going to say, what kind of brush do you want to make? And I'm going to choose Art Brush, and then OK. If you notice, it attaches it to a vector path, and it says it's going to stretch and all this great stuff. And we've already pre-colored it, so we don't need to worry about anything else. We just say OK. And now we have that brush in our tool palette. I'm going to keep going. Grab the next one, the Aquamarine. New brush, art brush, OK. Color looks good, OK. Settings are always default. Um, they're pretty good. You don't need to mess with them too much. The green one, new brush, art brush, OK. Color looks good, OK. And then the last one, the red, new brush. Right, art brush, okay. Color looks good, all right. Cool, cool. So now I've got these five values, they're proportionate, and we are ready to roll. And it's fully visual, so I can just always have those at my disposal. Okay, so now you can see that I can apply just to a circle, I pre-made these, um, any of these values, okay? So how am I gonna get them to be concentric? Let's talk about that for a second. So down here, I pre-made this graphic, okay? And I'll show you how I, how I actually did it. I started off with a perfect circle. I've got my pointer finger, actually my middle finger, on the shift key, and then I can drag and scale, and you can see I have now a proportionate circle. It's pretty cool. But for today, I want to also put my finger on the option key because that allows me to do this, center scale, yes. Perfect for concentrics. All right, so I'm gonna make a small inside circle, and then I'm gonna do my same technique like I did with the, with the bar charts. I'm gonna copy and then special paste, which is Command F, and that's gonna paste in front. And it makes a duplicate that sits right on top of the original shape. I'm doing that because I wanna be able to then scale, shift, option, drag it out. Look at that, perfect. Okay, if you notice, I have my settings so that the stroke will scale as I go there, so I can return this to one. It's an extra step, it's a little annoying, but I prefer to have strokes scale. Okay, so now we need to make this pair of shapes concentric, okay? And we need to attach five values. So we need three more lines in, in, inside of here. They need to be even and beautiful, and, you know, work with the things that we had. So luckily there's a, a tool in Illustrator that will allow us to do this. So if I select my pair here, I'm going to go up to Object, Blend, Make. Okay, if you notice, I got one ring. That's the default. It's going to always do one step between two shapes, okay, just to just the way Illustrator is set up. So if I now go back to Object, Blend, there are Blend options because this is a live object, right? It's, it's, I can edit it. So click Blend Options, and then in here, right now it says Smooth Color, but I'm going to choose Specified Steps from the Spacing. And right now it's set to 1 as the default. So if I need to show 5, I said I was going to add 3, so let's do that. 3. And then I'll unclick and re-click Preview. Ha-ha, there it is. Beautiful. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be perfect. Okay. So I'm going to say OK. And now I have this live shape that's really just a blend of the inner path and then the outer path. So, I mean, I could do this. You can see, right, it applies the shapes. It's going to look good. It's going to really work out. But I need to get at these inner strokes, and in a live shape, I can't. So I have to expand them. So I'm going to go up to Object, Expand, and these settings are fine. Okay. And there we go. We now have access to these things. But... When you expand um, anything that was a live shape, it groups it. So we have to go to Object, Ungroup. <clears throat> and then deselecting and reselecting. Now I have access to each one. So let's apply the brushes. I'm going to click on this outer one and get our biggest value. Then the second one, 
Next value. Ha uh ha. -huh. Boom. Boom. And boom. There it is. I've made a perfect arc chart, all based on real accurate values. That looks nice. And if I select it all, I can rotate it. And it will go to, it'll have a flat vertical edge. Right, we can now see the values sort of curl around. Very nice. But um, let's just say we wanted to do what's like an open one where there's um, not this gray. Okay, how do we get rid of that stuff? I can show you very simply. Unfortunately, it's going to require us to sort of break the chart a little bit. So what I'm going to do is copy it and then put a duplicate over to the side just in case I destroy it. Okay, it's a good policy to be non-destructive. So I'm going to select my concentric rings. And I'm going to go to Object, Expand Appearance, which will now make these not strokes but shapes. And because there's different colors, it broke the gray off from the color. So if I use my Direct Selection tool and then click on these gray spaces all at once, I held the Shift key so I could make a group selection, I just hit Delete. Boom, it's gone. And now you have this sort of super groovy roller disco looking chart, which is a lot of fun and it's accurate. Okay, so this concludes the, the quickie tutorial here about how we use brushes to make this really cool arc chart. Send me anything that you make. Thanks.